First, every day, the police receive reports of missing persons. Nearly 600,000 people go missing in the United States. And do their best to step out to look for these people. A good number of these missing cases are unsolved because the authorities never find the victims. They saw where he had been missing since 2002, discovered that he was still reported missing. However, we have had some rare cases of people disappearing for years and even decades. Then they would resurface from wherever they were hiding with explanations for their disappearance. We just sort of, in an hour, conversation tried to catch up on 32 years. From kidnapped victims to people who left their homes of their own volition, authorities have handled cases of people who disappeared into thin air and reappeared after many years. What happened to these missing persons during the period of their disappearance? Were some of these folks really missing, or did they just choose to stay hidden? It wasn't all bad. We made our own little home, and we were happy. Join us in today's video as we look into 15 people who disappeared but would appear years later. Number 15, Tanya Catch. There were many missing person cases reported in 1995, but Tanya Koch's story stands out as a very sad tale. In the fall of 1995, Tanya Koch was kidnapped by Tom Hose, a security guard at her middle school. At the time, Tanya was 14 years old, while Tom was 38 years old. Tom abducted Tanya, who had been living with her father, Jerry Cash, and kept her captive in his elderly parents' house in McKeesport. Tanya would remain in Tom's captivity for over 10 years. During this period, Tom sexually abused Tanya every day and threatened to kill her if she resisted or tried to flee. She was forced to use a bucket as a toilet and lived in constant dread. He also changed her identity to Nikki Diane Allen. By 2000, he allowed her to leave the house for short periods. Tanya would only regain her freedom in 2006 after she confided in a local deli owner about her situation. The deli owner called the police and Jose was arrested. Although Tanya is now in her 40s, she is still suffering from the trauma of the decade-long abuse. Number 14, Stephen Kubaki. In February 1978, Stephen Kubaki entered the annals of history after he went missing and miraculously reappeared after 15 months to the joy of his family. However, what everyone who heard his story found surprising is that Kubaki had no recollection of what had happened to him during the months of his disappearance. It was as if everything that happened during that period had been wiped off his memory. Kubaki had gone cross-country skiing on Lake Michigan before he disappeared into thin air. This was the last thing the then 24-year-old remembered. By the time he regained his memory, he was lying on a grassy knoll in Pittsfield. A look at the maps and signs that were found inside his backpack indicated that he might have gone as far as California during his wanderings. However, Kubaki has no memory of this visit. This has led some to conclude that Kubaki may have time traveled to the future or past. Number 13, William Bates, Dr. William Horatio. Bates was a wealthy ophthalmologist in New York City, but beyond the great strides he achieved in the medical field, he gave historians a puzzling story to unravel. On August 30, 1972, Bates wrote a hurried letter to his wife, Aida Seaman Bates, who was out of town visiting her mother. After the doctor sent the letter, he vanished without informing anyone of his whereabouts. A frantic search party was assembled to look for him across the United States and Europe, but the search was futile. Bates was nowhere to be found. The next thought on everyone's mind was that Bates was dead. This thought would only disappear after news emerged that a man fitting Bates's description was working as a medical assistant at Charing Cross Hospital London. The man had joined the hospital staff after first being admitted as a patient. The sad part of this story is that when Bates's wife finally got to see him, he had no memory of her and no recollection of his life prior to working at the Charing Cross Hospital. Number 12, Natasha Ryan. Natasha Ryan's missing story is unlike any other. In August 1998, when she was 14, Natasha went missing and the world paused to look for her. All hands were on deck to find her. Initially, the police wrongly assumed that Natasha's best friend, Mayoha Tokotawa, who was 15 at the time, had killed Natasha. Later, the police shifted their investigative gaze to local serial killer Leonard Fraser and charged him to court for killing Natasha. 
However, while the trial was ongoing, the police received an anonymous letter that said that Natasha was alive. The letter also came with a phone number and an address where Natasha could be reached. When the police visited the location, they found Natasha in her boyfriend's house, hiding in a wardrobe. It turns out that the then 14-year-old Natasha had willingly left home to be with her older boyfriend, Scott Black, who was 22 years old. This discovery came as a shock to the authorities. Number 11. John Darwin In 2002, John Darwin went missing while paddling his canoe in the sea outside his home. Darwin's abrupt disappearance for several days made his sons believe that their father was dead. The sons had asked for help from the public, but a large-scale search helped uncover nothing except a single paddle and the wreckage of his canoe. The discovery of these two items confirmed the suspicion that Darwin was dead. This narrative found its way to the trash bin five years later, when an unkempt Darwin appeared at a police station, claiming that he had no memory of what had happened to him. However, the truth soon surfaced. Darwin hadn't been missing for a single day in the past five years. He had been living in the seaside resort of Seton Carew, where he shared a bed with his wife, who was in on the lie. The couple had carried out a $680,000 fraud that freed them to live together in Panama. After they were exposed, the couple were charged to court and jailed. Number 10. Steve Carter For a long time, Steve Carter had questions about his childhood since he knew that he was adopted. Why was his birth certificate created after his birth? Who were his birth parents? These questions troubled him and he sought answers. He finally unlocked the door to this mystery when a simple internet search revealed that he matched the description of a missing child on missingkids.com. Carter was shocked to see that he fit the description of the adult look of a missing baby named Mark's Panama Barnes. Carter, who was living in Philadelphia, discovered that he had actually been born in Hawaii but had gone missing with his mother, Charlotte Moriarty, when he was barely six months old. This was not the first time his mother had disappeared. However, when she didn't turn up after three weeks, Carter's father, Mark Barnes, was scared that something bad had happened to his girlfriend and son. So he decided to report the pair as missing to the police. The duo disappeared on the 21st of June, 1977. It turned out that Charlotte had taken Carter to a stranger's house and given the police a fake name and birth date for her son. However, she was taken to a psychiatric hospital while Carter was put in protective care. Sadly, Charlotte escaped from the hospital days later and has not been seen till today. Thus, the authorities had no choice but to put Carter up for adoption, and he found a home three years later in the arms of Steve and Pat Carter. Thankfully, Carter was able to reconnect with his biological father 34 years later. Number 9. J.C. Dugard On the 10th of June, 1991, J.C. Dugard's life was upturned when she was kidnapped by Philip Garrido and his wife, Nancy. Dugard, who was 11 years old at the time, had been walking to a school bus stop in Myers, California, when she was abducted. She would spend the next 18 years in captivity at the Garrido's home 120 miles away in Antioch. While the authorities searched for her, Philip and his wife kept her in a soundproofed shed at the back of their house. Over the years, Philip sexually abused Dugard, and she ended up bearing two daughters for him when she was 14 and 19, respectively. She continued to live with the Garrido's for years until help came in 2009. That year, Garrido was visiting the campus of the University of California, Berkeley, in the company of two adolescent girls who happened to be his daughters with Dugard. The trio exhibited unusual behavior that the authorities decided to investigate, and the probing helped opened the can of worms that led to finding Dugard. Authorities finally identified J.C. as the 11-year-old missing girl from 18 years ago and wasted no time in arresting Philip and Nancy. The duo were charged to court for their crimes and ended up bagging life imprisonment sentences. It was later discovered that Philip Garrido had been on parole for a 1976 rape at the time he kidnapped J.C. So, the Dugard family, who were more than glad to reconnect with their missing daughter, decided to sue the state of California. In 2010, the state awarded the Dugard family $20 million in compensation. Number 8. 
Harrison O'Keen. In 2013, Harrison O'Keen came face to face with death, yet he survived. This astonishing story started when a tugboat, AHT Jascon 4, suddenly capsized and sank 1,000 feet below the ocean surface. All the crew on board were presumed dead, and a search party was sent to recover the bodies. You can imagine the surprise of the rescue team when they discovered O'Keen trapped in a four-foot bathroom. O'Keen, who was a Nigerian cook aboard the tugboat, had been trapped inside that bathroom for three days with no food or water. The divers had sighted his outstretched hand, signaling for help, and they rescued him from the bubbly he had been trapped in. He had spent 60 hours in that entrapment below the ocean's surface. If the divers hadn't come when they did, he would have lost consciousness due to the high level of carbon dioxide in that confinement. O'Keen considers his survival as nothing short of a miracle. Number 7. Julian Hernandez Julian lived in the bubble of a lie for 13 years, and he only got to see the light when it was time to apply to college. He experienced a huge stumbling block in his college applications when he was unable to verify his identity. When the school counselor helping him out with the application decided to dig further, it turned out that Julian was a missing child who had been kidnapped 13 years ago in Alabama. He had been five years ago when he was taken away from Alabama and taken to Cleveland where he currently lived. However, the surprising part of this kidnap story is that the culprit was a familiar face. It was Julian's father, Bobby Hernandez. It turned out that in August 2002, Bobby had taken Julian from his mother, contravening a court order that gave her custody of their son. For years, the police searched for Bobby and the missing child, following up on every lead, but it all turned out to be a waste of effort. Bobby had moved to Cleveland and gotten new identities using false information for him and his son to evade the police search. This truth had been hidden from Julian for years, and it never occurred to him that he had been reported missing years back. As expected, when the truth came out, Bobby, who was now 53, was arrested by the police and charged with kidnapping. Although Julian was disappointed by his father's actions, he still loved and respected Bobby because the latter had been a good father to him. So he didn't hesitate to make a plea to the judge that his father should get a lenient sentence. Julian's wish came to pass because Bobby was handed only a four-year sentence for his crime. Number 6. Petra Pasitka German police are still reeling in shock over the disappearance and reappearance story of Petra Pasitka. On July 26, 1984, 24-year-old Pasitka disappeared from her hostel at the German Braunschweig University. As soon as she was declared missing, the authorities started searching for her. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into years but they never found a body. Detectives were forced to conclude that Pazitka had been a victim of a sexually motivated murder. Five years later, in 1989, authorities officially declared that Pazitka was dead. This was inevitable since she had been missing for a long time. However, in 2015, police were forced to revisit the files of Pazitka after it was discovered that she was indeed alive. She hadn't been kidnapped or trafficked, like a free bird, she had been living on her own for the past three decades. She didn't want to be found all these years, so she had stayed under the radar. To achieve her goal, Pazitka had lived in various places across Germany under a new name, Petra Schneider. She perfected her disappearance by ensuring she had no passport, identity card, bank account, or driver's license. She had said goodbye to her former life and wanted nothing to do with her family. Number 5. Bo Bergdahl in June 2009, the U.S. Army was woken by the news that one of its soldiers, Bo Bergdahl, was missing. For years, the U.S. Army was unable to crack the case of Bergdahl's disappearance. The soldier had gone missing in action while stationed in Afghanistan. Later, the U.S. authorities found out that Bergdahl had been captured by the Taliban and was kept as a prisoner of war. Well, I'm scared. I'm scared I won't be able to go home. Upon learning about Bergdahl's situation, President Obama made it a priority to free the soldier from the captivity of the Taliban and return him to U.S. soil. To obtain Bergdahl's freedom, the U.S. had to trade him for five Taliban prisoners. However, upon Bergdahl's return, he didn't get a hero's welcome. 
This is because details had emerged that Bergdahl was an army deserter. He had left his base on the 30th of June 2009 and was sneaking away when Taliban operatives captured him. Although he regained his freedom in 2014, he was dishonorably discharged from the military and demoted to sergeant. Number 4. Edgar Latulip. In 1986, the name Edgar Latulip made it to the local Canadian news after he was reported missing from the Waterloo region of Ontario. He was 21 years old at the time. For three decades, it seemed as if Latulip had disappeared from the surface of the earth, and his family was forced to believe that he was dead. However, the story took an unexpected turn when it was discovered that Latulip was indeed alive and had been living in the Niagara region for the past 30 years. The road to this exciting discovery began when Latulip began having memory flashes of his past life, and it dawned on him that he had been living under the wrong name. He wasted no time in sharing his concerns with a social care worker who decided to help him trace his roots. When the social care worker googled Latulip online, it was discovered that he was the subject of a three decades long missing person search. Little by little, the authorities helped Latulip piece together the puzzle about his former life. Latulip, who was now 51 years old, was said to have suffered from mental health problems and had the brain of a 12-year-old child. He had been housed in a psychiatric home in Waterloo when he escaped with the plan of killing himself. He traveled down to the Niagara Falls area, but was unable to carry out his plan of dying by suicide. Instead, he suffered a head injury, which led to memory loss. Unable to remember where he had come from, Latulip began living in group homes and lived like that for years. This changed after he reconnected with his mother, Silva Wilson, and the rest of the family. Silva was more than happy to see that her son was alive and well. Number 3. Lucy Ann Johnson Authorities are still fascinated by the story of Lucy Ann Johnson, an American-Canadian woman who was reported missing in May 1965, but had actually disappeared since September 1961. Shocking, isn't it, that it took four years before her disappearance was officially reported to the police by her husband. This delay was why her husband, Marvin was immediately a prime suspect in this case. The police initially suspected homicide because they found it hard to believe that Lucy had simply walked away from home, leaving behind her husband and two children, Linda and Daniel. After interrogating Marvin, questioning neighbors and excavating the family's yard, the police found no evidence that Lucy's husband was behind her disappearance. So, no charges were laid on him. Although the case went cold, investigators continued to do DNA tests on unidentified remains in a bid to solve the puzzle of Lucy's disappearance, but they never found any matches. At the time of Lucy's disappearance, she had been living in Surrey, British Columbia with her family. In July 2013, Lucy's daughter, Linda Evans, decided to take one last shot at finding her. Linda placed an ad in the local media with details about her mother, as fate would have it, she received a reply from a woman named Rhonda, who lived in Whitehorse, Yukon. Rhonda dropped the shocking news that Lucy, who was now 77 years old, was very much alive. Lucy had remarried and given birth to four more children. She revealed that she had fled from her home because Marvin had been abusive. Although she had tried, Marvin hadn't allowed her to take her children with her, so she decided to disappear alone in order to escape his abuse. Number 2. Carlos Sanchez In 2015, Carlos Sanchez made it to the headlines of several newspapers, radio, and TV stations in another shocking missing person case. Sometime in 1995, a Spanish doctor in Seville named Carlos Sanchez had disappeared without a trace, leaving behind worried parents. After 15 years of searching for him, the authorities decided to declare him dead. So you can understand why they were beyond shocked to discover that Sanchez was alive. This discovery was made 20 years later in Tuscany. Sanchez had reportedly fallen into severe depression and decided to live as a hermit in a forest in Scarlino, near the Maremma coast in northern Tuscany. Two mushroom pickers had found Sanchez and surprisingly, he had been the one who introduced himself to them. He is reported to have said, I am Spanish, my name is Carlos, and I have been here for 20 years. The foragers decided to seek help from Penelope, 
an Italian missing persons charity. It was the charity that helped trace Sanchez's parents. However, by the time Sanchez's parents arrived in Tuscany, he had disappeared again. He had moved on from the location, and it was obvious that he didn't want to reconnect with his family. Number 1. William Burgess Powell On the 31st of August, 2004, a Burger King employee found a naked man unconscious behind the dumpster of the restaurant. Immediately, the police were alerted, and the strange fellow who had red ant bites on his body was taken to the hospital for treatment. There was no identity document on the man, so his hospital records were done under the name Burger King Doe. When he finally gained consciousness, he claimed that his name was Benjamin. However, he couldn't remember his last name, so he decided to go with Kyle. More so, he couldn't remember anything about his past, his family, or where he had come from. After some tests, the doctors diagnosed his condition as dissociative amnesia. The years that followed would see Benjamin Kyle go homeless and live in shacks. It was hard for him to get a job because he couldn't remember his full social security number. Kyle's real identity remained a mystery till February 2015, when a forensic genealogist found out that his DNA matched that of a missing man named William Burgess Powell, born on August 29, 1948. It turned out that Powell and Kyle were the same person. Upon uncovering his identity, Powell was given a new social security number. However, what authorities are still intrigued about is the fact that there are no records of Powell from 1983 till 2004 when he was found. Thanks for watching this video till the end. For more exhilarating discovery content like this, click the next video on your screen.